PlayStation 5 has been out for eight months, but now we are finally getting the first true PlayStation 5 video game, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. When you boot this up, you are going to say, Oh, look at the PlayStation on these graphics. This game is just beautiful. You got 17.4 octo quad processors pumping out 300 pixels per gallon, subwoofer mega aliasing with real time bump maps. Clearly, the game you are looking at right now could only ever be possible on the PlayStation 5. Am I right or am I right? Well, Richard, you're never gonna trust me again after this, but you just fell for my biggest trap ever. Again. This is actually the PS4 game from 2016, which is still a spectacular looking game. The Ratchet and Clank series has always been impressive visually. This was true in the PS2, PS3, PS4, and especially so in Rift Apart. Sweeping vistas, numerous reflective surfaces, massive scaled action sequences, expressive character animation, the varied humming of different types of ships zooming beneath you. There's a factory with a bunch of bouncy balls and you hit them. You gotta love the sound design on that. It's not just the level of detail, but the variety of locations. Neon lit cyberpunk cityscapes doused in purple rain. Dino jungles with mammoth creatures towering over you. The shattered and scattered mining planet Blizzard Prime. You're really gonna wanna take your time and absorb all of the little details in these worlds. Especially when you get to Mr. Zarkon's Cantina. This place is just ridiculous. There is so much concentrated detail in this one room. These guys are over here drinking drinks. Wasn't that a sound effect on that drink? This dude is riding a mechanical something. Over here, they're playing Street Fighter on the arcade cabinet. Now look at this little, look at these little creatures inside the jukebox. Who are these guys? Then you got a sheep sitting at the bar. Of course, you know who this sheep is, right? If you read his bio, turns out that's actually Chairman Drick from the original game. This cantina part is insane. Sony is really pushing the PS5 solid state drive as this breakthrough technology and Rift Apart pulls attention to this with its rift opening trick where you can seamlessly glide from world to world. This is a cool trick, but Sony, Remember all those PS4 games without loading? Uncharted 4, God of War, Red Dead 2, Last of Us 2, these games had one initial load screen and then never again. It was just one continuous experience from that point on. Not every game figured out load times, but you know what game did? The original Ratchet and Clank on the PS2. The load times are almost non-existent. This was 20 years ago. Rift Apart is an excellent looking game, one of the best. But is this game only possible on the PS5? I don't, I don't know about all that. Sony Santa Monica recently announced that the next God of War game is still coming to PS4. If the PS4 is still good enough for God of War Ragnarok, get, get the shut the fuck up out of here with this can't even shut the fuck up gameplay. Wait, we're, we're actually going to talk about the game in this video? The gameplay here is solid. It's not exceptional. It's not the true next generation experience. It's just solid. You have a nice variety of shooting, platforming, and puzzles, and a nice variety of weapons like the ice cube gun and the electrocutor and the sprinkler that turns enemies into plants. You can front flip onto a ship while blasting enemies off in midair with your shotgun. Whenever I see a TNT box, I break out the little pistol and get that pinpoint shot off to blow up a whole stack of crates. This never gets old. You can spawn in an entire army of minions to win fights for you. You have snail racing off of Undertale, grapple hooks, wall running, rocket boots that let you tear through every level. Some of the most expensive looking rail grind sequences I've ever seen. Even with all this going for it though, the repetition starts to creep in around the halfway mark. You have dozens of enemies on screen at a time, you have a dash, you pause and pick weapons from a wheel, and your guns chip off parts of the enemy's armor. And that's when I realized I am playing the G-rated version of Doom Eternal. This comparison does Ratchet and Clank no favors, because the combat of Doom Eternal is far more thought out. Every weapon beats nearly every enemy. There's very little strategy at play here. There is also a severe lack of variety among enemies, especially for a game that is about going to all these different dimensions, you know? The game just keeps throwing the same mini bosses at you again and again and again. I must have fought this big robot guy like 10 times and he never evolves as the game progresses. There's a lot of shooting sections, and then you bring out this little robot to play a virus mini game. And now here's some more shooting sections. So let's recap. Graphics? Ah, gameplay, mm. story, 
<laughs> the nicest thing I can say about the story is that it's competent. Most games, on top of being incredibly dumb, are also very drawn out and tedious. Rift Apart is brisk and snappy. Dr. Nefarious, the bad guy who always loses, sucks you into an alternate dimension where he always wins. It's definitely a cool premise that is squandered on very boring characters. The whole fun of the alternate dimension is seeing the characters you already know in a new light, like Skid McMarks. In the normal dimension, he's a laid-back surfer dude, but in the alternate dimension, he's a badass secret agent. The alternate versions of Ratchet & Clank, though, are pretty much the exact same characters. They have the same weapons and the same calculatedly inoffensive personalities. I'm glad you're okay, buddy. You too, Ratchet. Be, Be careful, careful out, out there. there. Why do you go to this planet? So you can get a rock. Why do you go to this planet? Uh, because the rock broke, now you have to fix it. This is the storyline, you guys. There just isn't enough emotional heft here to satiate an entire video game. Ratchet is intimidated by the prospect of finally meeting his lost race of rabbits. Meanwhile, Rivet and Kit both have trust issues they have to overcome. I guess the core idea is uncertainty, which isn't a good fit for a story this formulaic and predictable. Oh. I apologize. You feel bad? Even though I just watched your brain diary thingy? Oh my god, he feels bad even though she was mean to him? What? You okay, Bolts? You came after me. Oh my god, she came after him even though she didn't like him before? Oh my god. This game is rated E for everybody, not E for children only. To really tell an effective story, you need to take the audience through a series of different moods. But Rift Apart seems to only have one setting, loud. It's me! Take it! Ah! When they aren't screaming or shooting or blowing up stuff, then it's the complete opposite. Now, now they're too polite. It's like every other line of dialogue in this game is somebody saying thank you. Thanks for choosing Miss Circles. Thank you for going to such trouble on my behalf. Thank you both for freeing my brothers. Thank you, Ratchet, for helping us. Thank you. No, thank you. In case I do not get another chance to say it. Don't do it. Thank you. You piece of shit. They're trying to reach for some emotional moments here, but the dialogue is too sappy and congratulatory for it to connect. Everybody's always telling each other how great they are, or just really hamming it up with some corny monologue. So, what do you think of Clank? Oh, talented, resourceful? You're good, no, great! So of course he would be too. <laughs> because no matter how many times he screws up, he's always there when it matters most. I. I'm good at this! How do I rate this game? Well, people love to compare Ratchet and Clank to Pixar. There's even a Toy Story joke in this game. So I will say Rift Apart is like the cars of video games. Thank you. It should be I who is thanking you! Hmm. Cars 2, actually. 